Verse 16, the Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. He said the Lord's known by his judgment. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Haggaiah, Selah. Verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And there's the reference to hell again. Look, God is a God of judgment and God is a God that sends people to hell. Such a reason to fear. Such a reason to warn. Verse 18, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. Why is it saying they're not always going to be forgotten? Because right now in this earth, they are forgotten oftentimes. Right? People don't think about the poor and needy. People don't think about them. It, and that's why they're targeted, because they're easier targets. Less people are looking. If someone gets killed or, or gets robbed or whatever, less people care. And it's sad and unfortunate, but it's the truth. But praise God, because he cares, and he sees it, and he doesn't let it go unpunished. The needy shall not always be forgotten, because God remembers. <coughs> the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. It may seem like it perishes, but it doesn't. It hasn't just gone away. It's going to come back. And it's going to come back around... You know, when people are sowing to the wind, they reap the whirlwind. They may not experience the whirlwind for a little while. They may be spending their time sowing to the wind, and sowing to the wind, and thinking, ha ha, yeah, I'm getting away with it. I'm sowing to the wind, this is good, this is fun. I don't care about these people, whatever. But eventually, all those seeds that you were sowing to the wind are going to come back on you in full force. It does happen. It's not forgotten. And in our short time, time frame, some people might think it's just forgotten. It's not. It's not. That's why I praise God when you say even these older men, like this Weinstein and, and you know, other people, that, and there's always some new evil, wicked pervert in the news. I mean, just give it a year or two, and you're going to have some other new pervert, Epstein, who didn't kill himself. You know, there's another one that you're going to see in the news, you know, we just saw, and it's always someone else, Bill Cosby, some other person, some pervert, some, you know, pedophile, some rapist, somebody who's wicked that just comes up into the media, and even when they're old, they're getting, ju they're, they're, they're receiving the justice, it may, you may seem like it's finally, but you know what, it's gonna, ha it does happen, and even if people seem to go their whole life Without seemingly getting the recompense of the reward, they have hell awaiting them. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Verse 18, for the needy shall not always be forgotten, the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail, let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Verse 20, put them in fear, O Lord that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. Now, we're not done with the sermon yet. That's the last verse, but I want to dig more in depth on this last verse. It's, it goes hand in hand with the, with the whole sermon, right? With the, with the judgment, people getting too proud and not fearing the Lord because of their pride. And this is the same, uh, turn if you would to Ezekiel chapter 28. This is the pride that Satan has. You would think Satan would fear the Lord, right? I mean, Satan knows the Lord is God. Satan physically can see the Lord, right? He, 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 he's not in the same condition that man is in, in the sense that he has more knowledge. He understands, he's seen more. So you think, you know, you might think like, how, well, how in the world? Like, I could, it's easier to understand people who don't see a God and who are, you know, have all these other excuses to be deceived into thinking, well, there is no God or it's this or it's that. But Satan's just right there. I mean, it's like, there's the throne and there's the Lord sitting on the throne, Right? in heaven, and his will's being done, like, but you know, you know why, like, like, you think it's madness. 
why would he go out and start doing things and, and start you know, acting against the Lord and doing all this wickedness and being involved in so much sin? How, what in the world? Like, how could he possibly do that? It's because of his pride. Because pride blinds people. Blinds you. Like it's, it's, He's got shutters on thinking whatever he's thinking. I mean, I'm not going to claim to know what Satan thinks, but whatever he's thinking, he's blinded to the truth. He's, he's gotten so full of himself and so lifted up, and you can see this characteristic in human beings. Because people that get super proud and haughty and just puffed up and full of themselves, they start to think they're invincible. They start to think they could do anything. This is the Epstein's. This is the people in, in positions of high power who have gotten away with so many things, or seemingly, right, in their minds, have gotten away with so many things. They have so much money. They have so much power. They can do whatever they want. They can stamp people out. They could command people to be put to death, whatever. They've got all this power, and they're so full of themselves. And oftentimes, these are going to be people who are in these positions of being the rulers of the world, have been corrupted by all this pride, right? And they think so greatly of them. That's why Psalm 9 ended with, Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Put them in fear. Let them know you're God, you're the Lord, and they're just men. They're not anything more than that. That's it. 